Bennett from FX's Dave. Seasons one and two are available right now, only on Hulu. I am obsessed with this show. It's oh. incredible. I really believe it deserves <laughs> every single Emmy it's Thank ever you. it's ever voted for and, and is eligible for. The show is is brilliant and it's loosely based around your life. For anyone who doesn't know, explain to us what it's about. Yeah, so I'm I'm really a rapper, and uh, you know it's kind of like my parents definitely didn't see it coming. So on the one hand, I live a super exciting life. I go on tour, but on the other hand, I have like neurotic Jewish parents calling me the night before being like, you better get enough sleep because tomorrow is New York City. And it's like, everything is, uh, I feel like, uh, the exact opposite how you'd expect it to be when it comes to, to, to my life. I mean, the, the clip we just saw there, you're up on a billboard promoting the Little Dicky album, Penis. Have you, <laughs> have you ever had to do something like that in real life? Uh, I mean, honestly, like right now, for example, it is Emmy voting season and FX wants me to do like an FYC event, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's for your consideration, vote for this show for Emmys. And they asked me if I would strap myself to a billboard and be the Y in the FYC in reality. Yeah. And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I said, in what, in what world does like, you know, are they asking like Andrew Garfield to strap <laughs> his body to a, yeah. And I just feel like there's the, I don't know, I guess because I'm a comedian and they think like, oh, he'll do something wacky crazy. and crazy, but yeah. no. I, I, I do think it would be good if that was FX's strategy, was just every star strap. of FX has to strap themselves to a billboard totally. for 24 hours. And I love FX, but I hate that, that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really do. I mean this. I think the show is so brilliantly written. I think what you're doing on it is very, very difficult, and you make it look incredibly easy. And uh, I hope it gets the recognition that it, it so richly deserves. You and the entire cast. Thank you. And the entire cast team around it. I think it's incredible. I want to talk to you about this, Giancarlo. Early in your career, I'm, I'm almost certain lots of people won't know this, you were in five episodes of Sesame Street Look at you here. Look at you there. Now, five episodes is a lot. How was Big Bird as a scene partner? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the, the greatest scene partner ever. Uh, you know, uh, when I first got there and started to rehearse, I thought, you know, in my naivete, that uh, it really was some kind of strange... You naivete. Yeah, well, well done. I did, yeah. Well, well done. You. Thank you so much. Carry on. That, that it was a real bird mm. uh, until it started speaking and this voice came out, and it was that of Carol Spinney. And I got really close to Big Bird because, after all, I was his camp counselor uh, up at Bear Mountain for about 14 days. And in that time, I got to know him. And uh, this man sweated buckets in that suit. Yeah. And, and, and kept his composure. Those back in the day where the suit was heavy and there were no fans you could stick inside. But he gave me some life lessons that stuck with me forever. Uh, be true to yourself. Um, be a child always. Be in wonder and be in anticipation of a wonderful and beautiful world a wonderful, wonderful man who helped me to realize, don't forget to play. It's allowed me to listen better, listen to my children. I have four daughters who, you know, call me out now, and instead of re reacting to the threat of them putting a chink in my armor, I go, you know what, you're right. I was raised in a different time, and I gotta work on that. You know, I mean, we walked into, uh, with my, my daughters, I had dinner at um, a hotel in New York, and they had this big, huge wooden Indian. And I walked in, and I looked at it, and normally, you know, that to me is art, and it's beautiful, the room was gorgeous, but I said, that's appropriation! My youngest daughter went, way to go, Papa! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, look, it, it, it is. This is taking a real turn for <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, but There's no, I, I, if you'd have asked me when I held up this picture, yeah. where this... <laughs> where this story was going. Yeah. The question was, <laughs> how was Big Bird as a partner? <laughs> and we have ended up in appropriation in a restaurant with your daughter. I mean, if that's not the mark of a great storyteller, yeah. I don't know what is. <laughs> Reggie, do you have a question for our guest this evening? Yes, I do. Ask Christian. This question goes for us of our trust. Uh, if and this is only hypothetical, if you had the power to transmute energy into any form that you wanted to, what would you do with that power? Transmute? What's transmute mean? Transmute. Um, it's alchemy. It's turning precious metal into anything you want, and we are 60% um, well, we're 90% water, and we're all about energy, and I believe in alchemy. 
um, St. Germain. You're brilliant. I don't know dude. again. I We're don't gonna... know where it's going. Okay, well, talking? here's where it's going. <laughs> What's going on? I would transmute that power, transmute in an alchemical way through alchemy into the power of love. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Well, how do you follow love? Mm. You know, it's kind of, I was going to say world peace. <laughs> That's love. So it's synonymous with love. So yeah, I would just, we would try to cure everything, I think. Mm. You know. Love and world peace, Reg. Yeah. Uh, those, those are the only answers. Great. Those are correct. All it's right. absolutely <laughs> correct. Please thank Giancarlo Esposito, Dave Bird, Betty Who is here when we come back, everybody. Thank you. I love you.